We're going to do an exercise. Now I want you to think of all the stealth killers that are in the game currently, and one thing that is similar about their stealth. If your answer was it's conditional, then you're correct. For example, Wraith has to go into his cloak, which he can't attack until he leaves it. Myers only has stealth in tier 1. Ghostface only loses his terror radius when he activates his Night Shroud, and not only does it have a 30 second cooldown, but if you attack, you lose it. Basically, all of these stealth killers have a conditional situation to where they can be stealth, which survivors get used to. They get used to listening to the cues and knowing when you should theoretically not have a terror radius. This is where stealth perks come in. When you add in perks that remove your terror radius on stealth killers, it throws off the timings on when you can and can't be hurt. And that makes these killers significantly more dangerous because you just never know when they're going to be stealth or not. For example, with Ghostface, normally when you're within a certain distance of someone and your Night Shroud is up, you make a little sound effect so survivors can hear it. But if I just lose my terror radius from something like, let's say, Tinkerers or Plaything, then survivors will be sitting there listening for the sound and not paying attention. Then I'll just come around the corner and smack him. Long story short. Stealth perks are good on stealth killers and I'm going to show you that today. This is the build. Let's get it. Alright, let's get started. So we're still going to be using our stealth in this video, but the main point is that there'll be times where we don't actually have to use our stealth and we'll still get pretty good value out of stealthing. Sprint burst, I assume. Nice, that's one pallet on the way. Interesting. Tinker is Prox, which means I can go over there. I don't have to use my shroud, which means it won't make the shroud noises. And just like that, I literally was able to walk up to them without any worry of being found. Oh, she fastballed that. Nice. Alright, this had to stick to the gens instead of going for the save right away. Works for me. I'm telling you, they were literally listening for the sound that Ghostface Shroud makes. Okay, very nice. I would stalk if I had my power back at this point, but I don't. Big spins. You either have dead heart or you are dead, my friend. You are dead, my friend. Alright, now there should be three people that just straight up cannot hear my terror radius. So I really don't even have to stealth anymore for anyone but this guy right here who I'm going to stealth for. Everybody else cannot hear my terror radius, which is really nice. Which means for this play... Ooh, maybe I can get a little ambushy ambush here. She barely got it. Well played. Well, you stupid. Fall for it twice, very good. You actually went for it that time. Well played. Oh, oh I almost didn't get that. Now all we need to do is find the Michaela. Guys are 
crawling, let's go. That's the power of Hex plaything. She literally didn't know I was there, although I wasn't stealth at that point. So she kept working on the generator, and then sure enough, boom, pop her in the butt. I'm telling you, having stealth perks on stealth killers is so secretly OP. He's about 60% stalked. So I could definitely finish that. And he does not make it anywhere. Oh, thank goodness. Fuck. That's really bad. I'm gonna reset here. If I could get one more Tinker proc out of that, that would be nice. Yay. <laughs> Goodbye. She lives because of your sacrifice. This is a power of this build. Destruction. Annihilation. Use stealth perks on stealth killers. It just throws people off. <laughs> 